believe that Oswald killed Kennedy. Honestly, I don't think he did. Before that fateful day of November the 22nd, 1963, very few people knew who Lee Harvey Oswald was. But before that day was over, his name was broadcast probably worldwide. Um, the first time I met Lee was in front of my supervisor's office, William Shelley, and we referred to him as Bill. Um, so he uh, called me to his office, and when I got down there, there was a young man standing there. and. He introduced me uh, to uh, Lee, and he said, Lee is going to be working with us. And he says, what I want you to do, and by that, and thou, at that time, I went by the name of Wesley, my middle name. He said, Wesley, he said, I want you to uh, teach Lee how to fill orders as well as you. And I said, well, I'll do my best. Well, for a couple of days, Lee was just like my shadow. Everywhere I would go, Lee was there. And he was watching and he was learning. So one morning, like I said, a couple of days, third day, I walked in and I said to myself, I said, let's see how much he's learned. And so I got a clipboard and I took some of the easy orders I would feel, and I'd put on the clipboard. And I said, today, I said, we're going to find out where you are. And I said, uh, if you have any questions, I said, be sure to come and find me and ask me. Well, the thing that impressed me was that he wasn't scared. He took the uh, clipboard and he says, fine, I'll see what I can do. And Lee was a very quick learner. And I enjoyed that. I guess that's the teacher in me. Uh, over the years, um, I've had the opportunity to teach people in different types of employment. Uh, Lee was a great worker, always on time, always looking for something to do. And I always told him, I said, if you get the, if you finish the orders on your clipboard, you come find me and I'll get some more for you. Well, if you think, probably in your own life, if you worked with someone. How many people have that attitude, that kind of energy? Um, I guess, as I look back over the time, I think I was very fortunate. I got to see a side of Lee Oswald. That most people will never have. When you read about him, all you hear is terrible things. You don't read that. That Lee was very good with children.
He loved them. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, I was living with my sister and her husband at that time uh, with three little girls. And just listening to them talk about Mr. Lee. The games he would play around a big oak tree. And by the way, if you ever have the opportunity to come to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that large oak tree still stands there today. It stands in a before a house that was once owned by Ruth Payne. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that name, Ruth Payne. She was the lady that Marina was living with uh, in Irving, Texas. And by the way, it was down the block from where my sister and brother-in-law and their home was. There's only about a half a block on the same side of the street. And uh, a lot of the children in the neighborhood, that was a place they would congregate in the afternoon, especially on Friday afternoon, because that's the day Lee would ride home with me. And by the way, how did, it, how did that start? Well, when Lee first started there, um, I found out from talking with him that his wife lived in Irving, Texas. And I said, that's interesting, because I said, that's where I live currently. And he told me the address of where his wife was living, and I said, well, that's right down the street from where I live. I said, would you like a ride out to Irving? And at that time, I didn't know that he was living in a, a rooming house in Dallas on Beckley. And his wife was living with Ruth Payne. I heard my sister talk about a woman that was living with Ruth Payne that had a child and she was pregnant with a, a second child. But as things progressed and I worked really, I, I found out that uh, that was Lee's wife. So very quickly, he and I came to agreement. He asked me, he says, would it be all right if I ride home with you? I said, sure, you can ride home any day, anytime you want to go. I said, I have to go out there every day. He said, well, you see, it's only going to be on the weekend. And I said, weekend? He said, yes, on Friday afternoon. And he would ride home with me on Friday afternoon and then ride back with me on Monday morning. Well, being a young boy, and I realized he was away from his family, I didn't want to take any of his time away from his family. So, answer to your question, did you ever do anything together on the weekend, Friday afternoon to Monday morning? The answer is no. We never went to the movies. We never stopped and had a beer and a sandwich and talked about what we did that week, never. There's lots of rumors that I was seen with Lee at different places. I'm telling you, that's totally false. Um, as I said, Lee was an excellent worker and a good person. And I once said the other day, matter of fact, just a little over a week ago, I was talking to a couple, and I told them, I said, Lee Oswald was a nice guy. He was always polite to me. He was very good with the children in the neighborhood, which were three of my little nieces were those children. And uh, if you'd ask Lee a question, he'd always answer you. He's very polite and answer you. 
But Lee wasn't the type of person that would just come up to you and initiate a conversation. He wasn't a big talker. But the thing I did notice about him, when he did speak, he impressed me by the words that he would use in a sentence. And Lee only worked there at the Texas School Book Depository a short time. But in that short time, I told him, he asked me about some of the guys that worked there. And uh, I told him, I said, well, you need to go in the break room, which you probably read and heard of as they call the domino room, where the guys would play cards, play dominoes, and eat their lunch. Well, I did eat in there a couple times. It was too noisy for me. So I always preferred, I always put my lunch down in the basement where it was nice and cool year-round. And on my lunch break, a lot of times I would go down and get on, sit on a, a pallet of books. And sometime during the day, if I had been filling an order and I filled an order for a book, and I looked at it and I liked it, well, I'd take a copy of that book and I would sit down on my lunch break and I would read just by myself. It was, it was very, um, it was very soothing and relaxing because while we were working, it was fast paced. And getting back to what I said that Lee was, I thought, quite smart was that back in those days, we didn't have the technology we have today. Where if you work in a distribution center, that's what they call them now, instead of warehouses, they're distribution centers, uh, you get a printout, an order, it gives you, it tells you exactly where the, the product is. Back in those days, we was just the beginning of the computer era we got the printout. The orders came off of a printer, much like they do today. But there's, there wasn't any location of where that textbook was. So therefore, you had to you had to be a fast learner, and you had to remember things because you couldn't afford having someone take you around and show you where everything was. And Lee did a fantastic job in that. Like I said earlier, not to be repetitious, he learned very quickly. And it was a pleasure to teach him and work with him because he was such a good worker. And as I sometime go back to that time, because I'm a time traveler. And if I could go back and change that day, I would. Because That tragic day, if you, for ones of you sitting in this room are old enough to remember November the 22nd, 1963, we lost our president, we lost a, pre, uh, we lost a policeman uh, by the name of J.D. Tippett. Uh, his wife, Marie Tippett, I had an opportunity to meet her a week ago last Thursday, and she's a fantastic person. A wonderful personality. On that day, she lost her husband, but three children lost their father. 
And this tragic day in November 1963 has impacted many people's lives. Most people just think about the Kennedy family. But it goes farther than that. And as I said, if I could change anything, this would never have happened. Because my true belief is on that day, after that tragedy, I think America began to slide from God's grace. America is not what it once was 50 years ago. Just stop and think. Do you have someone who lives on each side of you that you don't even know what their name is? Maybe. You work with someone that you only, you only kind of know, you really don't know. The point I'm trying to get is people don't care about anyone else but themselves. That's very sad. Where is America going? The way we're going now is not good. But there's enough of us alive that we can teach our grandchildren and our that, hey, it has to stop somewhere. America can once be great again. And you know, talking about this, John Kennedy said in one of his speeches, he said, ask not. Watch your country. can do for you. But what you can do for your country. And I think we must never forget that. position about the agency is they didn't cooperate with us. They affirmatively made an effort not to cooperate with us, and therefore everything that they told us is a lie. Uh, and all of the statements in the report about cooperation is just false. We were had.